Hello, my name is Mariah, and I am the owner and creator of the Realm of Aloria ERP servers on Conan Exiles. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a non-repeatable quest using the Pippi User and Server Management System, which is a mod for Conan Exiles that you can find in the Steam Workshop. I will post a link to that mod in the description below so you can find that mod and do what I'm doing. So in order to make a quest, you're going to first want to log in as an admin to your server. You'll want to press escape, hit the settings button, go to the last tab, which says server settings, click the make me admin button and type in your password for your server. I'm already logged in as an admin, so I'm not going to do that right now. But once you have that enabled, you'll be able to press shift and insert, which will open your Pippi menu. You'll click the second to last tab, which will be your cheat panel, and you'll want to select the build-in menu within your spawn menu. You're going to type thespian, which will allow you to click the thespian and spawn it into your inventory. If you have room on your hotbar, it'll spawn into your hotbar like mine did. Otherwise, it will be in your inventory when you press I. So you're going to want to place your thespian. Oh, she's perfect. She has pink hair. I love her. Um, once you place your thespian, you'll be able to select your thespian by pressing E. You'll be able to give them a name. I'm going to call mine Mimsy. Once you've named your thespian, you're going to want to set them as a dialogue thespian. You'll also be able to do things like pick a voice actor for them, set a profession if you'd like. I usually just do quest giver. That way when a player approaches this thespian, they'll be able to see that this is Mimsy, the quest giver. So once you are inside of your Pippi Mushi Editor menu, you're going to see an origin node. This origin node determines the start of your quest line. After the start of your quest line, you are going to want two condition nodes. These condition nodes will determine whether they have completed this quest and whether they currently have the quest. It doesn't matter what you name these as long as you type them exactly the same everywhere the quest is mentioned or else this will not work. It is probably the single most important thing that you'll learn here because this determines whether or not your quest is repeatable. So once you have connected your origin node to your first condition node, it will ask you, have they completed the quest, yes or no. If they have not, you'll want to ask if they currently have the quest. If they do not currently have the quest, this is where you are going to start your quest line. So I'm going to keep this real simple for the sake of making this video short as possible. So she's going to say, hi, I'm Mimsy. Can you help me? Now you're going to want to add two option notes. And once you have your two option nodes, you can say, yes, I'll help. Or nah, not right now. You'll connect both of these to the same output, and that'll allow you to select between the two options after she speaks this dialogue. If they decide they want to help, your action node will give them the quest, which is right here. And you'll again want to type your original quest name and connect those two together. If they decide, nah, I don't want to do it, I would just close the quest because they don't want to do it. Hello, close dialogue. All right. So go ahead and connect those two together. And that's like the first completed part of this. So if they don't have the quest um, and they've never completed the quest and they don't want to do the quest, that's over. That's like completed. They closed out. They're done. But if they do want to help, you'll want to give them the quest, add a new dialogue that explains what the quest is. Again, we're going to keep this super short and sweet. And now that you have the quest and you've already agreed to the quest, we're just going to add a single option node and say, sure. 
I'll go find one. And then again, we'll add another action node and close that dialog, which I always have trouble finding. So that's the second part completed. You have now done two branches of your non-repeatable quest. Now we're going to want to come over here. So if they've already finished this quest, that's going to be this option right here that has completed quest true. You can add a dialogue node and it keep it really simple and say, thanks for helping me. You're the best. And then again, an action node to close your dialogue. And that just means that if they've already done the quest, they cannot do the quest again. Really important. That way they can't just bring you the same item over and over again for whatever the reward is. And that allows you to give better rewards for something that may not be a ton of work, but if you're only doing it once for the sake of a quest, like your reward can be higher than if you can do it over and over and over again. Okay. So the next thing you're going to want to ask is, do they have an item? This is an item retrieval quest. So you're going to add another condition node. So if they have the quest, it's going to connect to this condition node that will ask if they have an item. And you can click the search menu and type the name of the item you want, since we're doing a quest for this mysterious bell. I am personally just going to add this one and they just are going to ask if they have one mysterious bell in the inventory. If they do not, you can add a dialogue node down here and she can just say like, come back when you find that bell, would you? And again, we will add an action node to close your dialogue. So this next part that we're going to do is pretty important because what you're going to need to add here is not only you're going to need to take away the item, give the reward, remove the quest, and then again close the dialogue. So I'll take you through that in order. So you'll add a new dialogue. Hey, did you find that bell? And a new option node, I'm just going to put give her the bell. An action node that will remove the item, which you can search it like I did just did, but you actually don't have to do that. If you already have the item, you just come over here to the item ID, copy and paste that over here, add the number, and you can see that it popped up that this is a mysterious bell. You want to make sure that you're connecting your input outputs the entire way through the quest. So now that they have removed the item, you'll want another dialog node and she'll say something like, wow, this is exactly what I wanted. Yay. <laughs> All right. So she's really happy you brought her that. And now you're going to want to sneak in another action node right here. And this is just going to remove the quest or complete it rather. Go back, copy your quest name into that, connect these two together. And you'll do an option node right here. I usually just do continue at this point. And that'll just mean like, all right, continue with the conversation add some more dialogue. I do it this way because um, I found that these action nodes work best if they're split up this way in between a dialogue and an action instead of like lined up back to back to back to back like that. Um, this way just make sure that you're clicking continue um, to do each step of the process of removing your item, completing your quest, and then giving your rewards. So after you continue, She'll say something like, thank you so much. Here's your reward. Which would you like? I like to give people the option of their reward so you can add two option nodes 
and two action nodes. You can say like ask for gold or ask for a rare mount. So if you choose to give them, I don't know why I can never like find what I'm looking for in this menu. You're going to want to select give funds give them like five pippy gold, 10 pippy gold. It depends on the balance of your economy. I'm not going to tell you what to do there. Or you can give them an item. And then again, you're going to go through the search function. I'm going to type the word mount and just pick a random mount. We're going to do the Komodo mount. And then we'll just connect these all together. There we go. After that, again, you'll put two dialog nodes. Here's five gold. Thanks again. Or here's a Komodo dragon. Please take care of them. And then after that, you will have been awarded this item, so long as you remember to type an amount that they're being awarded. And then you're going to do another action, I mean, option node. And that's just going to say goodbye. Connect those two together. And your final action node, which will close this dialogue. So now you're going to have a lot of stuff on your menu. It might seem pretty overwhelming, um, but all these different branches is what allows this to function as a non-repeatable quest. You are going to definitely want to save op often in the Pippin menu. You can also go to local script storage and save your current quest. I'm just gonna save mine as an example, my name, and then that'll show up down here to be loaded on any server that has Pippin. So now that we have set that up, we should be able to talk to Mimsy if this was done correctly. Hi, I'm Mimsy. Can you help me? Nah, not right now. And that just closes it out. Hi, I'm Mimsy. Can you help me? Yeah, I'll help. Can you bring me a mysterious bell? Sure, I'll go find one. Do, 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 do. Going to get a bell. I'm just going to spawn one because mysterious bells are kind of hard to find. And now I have one of those. Hey, Mimsy. Hey, did you find that bell? And because I have the bell in my inventory, she knows that I have it already, but she's asking to be polite. Going to give her the bell. Wow, that's exactly what I wanted. Yay. Thank you so much. Here's your reward. Which would you like? So you can either ask for a rare mount or ask for gold. For the sake of this, I'm going to ask for the mount so you can see that it works. You can see that I was spawned a Komodo mount right there. And you're going to click goodbye. After you click goodbye, talk to her again. Oops. Oops. Okay. <laughs> so I made a mistake and didn't connect an option node right here. So you definitely want to put an option node there so it doesn't just immediately close it out after it types that up. So just say goodbye and close that out. All right, now that you talk to her, she says, thanks for helping me. You're the best. And then you can say goodbye. Um, another thing that you might consider doing, and this is a perf personal preference, is going into the Mushi editor and notifying the player when it gives the quest and when it completes the quest, as well as, I guess you can't notify the player that the item was removed. That's pretty subtle. Bleh. <sighs> Sorry, I'm really tired. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but anyways, yeah, that is how you do that. Yes, I want to save my changes before I close. 
So hopefully you found this informative in some way. If you did, I would appreciate it if you left a like on the video. It really helps me out. If you're interested in joining the realm of Valoria, I'll have link to our server and our Discord in the description below. Please keep in mind that this is an 18 and up community. If you are not 18 years old, you need to wait until you are to play with us. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.